Okay, hi there, and welcome to another in our series of macro essay plans. This time we'll take a look at the key question of policy trade-offs. And here's our question. Evaluate the view that falling unemployment inevitably has trade-offs with other macroeconomic objectives. Discuss with reference to a country or countries of your choice. So in this uh, question, I'm going to build two KAA points, two analysis points, evaluate each point as I go, always leaving lines between paragraphs, and then come to a final reasoned conclusion and show you some analysis diagrams you can draw. My first KAA point is that falling unemployment may cause, might cause an acceleration in wage inflation in the labour market. That then leads to an increase in cost push and demand pull inflationary pressures. If wages are rising faster than productivity, for example, and of course, this is a trade-off suggested by the short-run Phillips curve analysis. What tends to happen is that as unemployment falls, the bargaining power of workers goes up. We often see increased labour shortages, particularly skilled workers, and higher demand for raw materials, component parts, also increases variable costs. All of this together can cause an inward shift of aggregate supply. You can visualise that in your diagram, perhaps, leading to a higher rate of inflation. However, it's not automatic in evaluation that inflation will always rise as unemployment falls. Indeed, the improved supply side flexibility of the labour market, particularly in the context of the UK, might have caused a fall in the NIRU. Now, the NIRU, N-A-I-R-U, is a, an acronym which means the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Essentially, the rate of unemployment consistent with so with the rate of unemployment that we can reach how far unemployment can fall before inflation starts to accelerate and that may well have fallen so there's a, an improved trade-off external factors also can keep inflation low even if unemployment is falling so commodity prices such as oil and gas intensified global competition they can all keep inflation down even if there's a bit of extra inflation in the labor market it's not inevitable that falling unemployment leads to a rise in inflation. My second possible trade-off is to link falling unemployment to the external accounts. So falling unemployment leads to increased wages, adjusted for inflation, real wages. That then leads to increased household incomes, which can cause a surge and increase in demand for imports of goods and services, particularly if the marginal propensity to import is high, in other words, if the income elasticity of demand for imports is high, and in the absence of an offsetting factor, a rise in imports will lead to a worsening of the current account of the balance of payments. Unemployment in the UK has fallen. It's now less than 4% of the labour force, and yet we've achieved uh, record levels of current account deficits in excess of 3 4 nearly 5% of GDP. So falling unemployment can lead to a worsening of the trade balance. However, perhaps the fall in unemployment was the result of improved supply side performance. Perhaps productivity in the UK has improved. Perhaps there's been a, an improvement in export sales overseas, uh, perhaps contributed to by a fall in the exchange rate. happened in 2016 after the Brexit referendum. And if the exchange rate falls, providing the Marshall Learning Condition holds, then that will improve the net trade balance whilst also stimulating output and jobs in sectors such as cars and tourism. So uh, falling unemployment could be the result of a rise in exports, which of course helps to maintain a trade position even if unemployment's falling. Uh, examiners look for you to get your timing right so that you have, you have the opportunity for a final conclusion. Your exam board will tell you how long this needs to be. My, my exam board requires a relatively short final conclusion that says something fresh. So I'm going to go back to the Phillips curve. Phillips curve for the UK seems to have flattened. The trade-off between unemployment and inflation seems to have improved, meaning that we might be able to get close to full employment and yet stay within within the range of the 2% inflation target. However, so in that sense, that trade-off's improved. However, low productivity, low investment, the UK only invests 17% of GDP, can mean that strong growth of GDP and falling unemployment is associated with a worsening of the external trade position. So that, that trade-off probably has worsened in the UK. Loads of concepts, 
that you can use. The examiners are looking for you to in, in, include concepts in your answers. Phillips curve, aggregate supply, productivity, the NIRU, the Marshall learning condition. They're looking for you to use as many year 13 concepts as you can, but also to bring into play your year 12 analysis as well in your final A level. So the Phillips curve, a little error here, that should be W2. Actually, I'm just going to change that. So the Phillips curve analysis uh, is one you could go to. Falling unemployment from U1 to U2 could cause wage inflation to accelerate. There could be an inevitable trade-off. However, we haven't seen that in the UK. We've seen relatively stable wage inflation for several years now as unemployment's fallen. So that suggests this curve, this is a developed diagram for your exam to get higher analysis marks. And this diagram shows a fall in unemployment. But if the Phillips curve is shifted to the left and flattened, then you can have a consistent wage inflation, but this time at a, at a much lower rate of unemployment. Also possible to use ADS analysis, of course, if you wanted to show a trade-off between unemployment and inflation. You could look at the changing elasticity of the aggregate supply curve. In this situation, as aggregate demand is increasing from 83 to 84 to 85, the trade-off's getting worse, isn't it? <coughs> because aggregate supply is becoming inelastic. We're reaching, getting close to capacity levels of production. Keep in mind, just finally, the exam board love asking questions about trade-offs between different policy objectives, unemployment and inflation, growth and inflation, growth and the balance of payments. We've covered two of those in this session growth and inequality, um, living standards and environment. Lovely, lots of questions on trade-offs are possible. Okay, thank you for joining in and hopefully you found this essay plan a useful exercise.